me. First of all, um, thank you guys for doing this for us and playing. Our pleasure. Excellent, excellent. So Ben and Andrew and um, uh, Coachella, top of mind. Uh, how was it for you? You performed on the main stage, which is terrific. Uh, great sign of, of respect and also your third time at Coachella. Mm -hmm. How did it go? It's great. It was a big show for us. The dust storm was blowing in, and I don't know. Oh, sorry, I'm not good at public speaking, right? <laughs> Keep going, just go with it. Yeah, it's all good, it's all good. Uh, either am I, actually. Um, there was a dust storm, and uh, I'm curious how that affected you. Were, does, was it a distraction at the time? Because there were high winds and crazy dust, and it was kind of intense for a minute there. Well, yeah, they, we thought that we were going to have to not have our video psychedelic visual wall behind us, you know, which would be very detrimental to our live show because then people would have to watch us stand still on stage. But, like, the, um, the wind was blowing in this direction, <laughs> so it was kind of not so bad for us. Talk about the three, the three times uh, that you've been at Coachella over, over the years. I've seen two of the three. Um, the first was on a right that was spectacular, and I believe you were in one of the tents. We were. Second was I think maybe it was the Mojave. Moha Mojave, yeah. Oh, okay. Mojave. <laughs> <laughs> or Mojave, that's fine. Uh, second was the, the outdoor stage, right? What? The outdoor stage um, was your second performance. Uh, it was outdoors, yeah. Yeah, and I remember it, was, it felt a bit harrowing, that performance, because you were... Intent on presenting your new album, your sophomore release at the time. That might be a bit of an over Harrowing. statement of uh, well, our I, calculated efforts there. I, you know, it was interesting because no one had heard the record. You were basically presenting the album uh, for the first time to the public. And, um, you know, everyone was like gagging for the hits from the first album. Yeah. And you were not having it. You were like, we are going to play this album, you know, in full. Yeah. But, I mean, the funny thing was that I think we were actually going to play kids in that set and mm -hmm. they cut us off because there was some like delay uh, setting up before so we were like five minutes short or something like that yeah so but people made a really big deal out of our it. our devilish plan worked in the end <laughs> <laughs> we were able to keep all of the fun times from happening for all of our fans <laughs> <laughs> fools <laughs> you know it's actually pretty rare that any any band plays three times at, at Coachella. I mean, that's, that really doesn't happen. Yeah, we're, we're, we had a great show, and now it's two weekends in a row, and um, that means we'll be doing the same thing on Saturday. <laughs> um, I feel like I had a good, funny anecdote. Oh, the first time we played Coachella, which was like, our, we, we, our, our, we were still trying to figure out how to ride but I don't know, that's a good metaphor, right? Like, for, like horse riding. Um, we were still, you know, not quite comfortable in this saddle. And uh, decided to uh, jump off stage during, while we were playing kids, which is what we used to do in college, in college days. But it didn't quite have the same effect at the Coachella Music and Arts Festival. It was very, like, kind of a reality check. Talk a bit about your visuals, which are, are were really cool um, this past weekend. Um, did you, uh, who did you work with for that whole uh, presentation? Yeah. By the way, I, I love your uh, Lichtenstein uh, print here. It's Thank nice, you. Nice, very cool. Anyway, go on. Uh, so visuals, um, yeah, we've, well, we've been working with our friend Alejandro for the live stuff, uh, which has been really nice. Uh, just a, like he's, he's just a good friend who lives in Brooklyn also, and, and uh, I think he gets us, which is nice. Like we don't have to explain what we're going for too much with him. Just kind of let him go crazy with it. And, and he does, he's mixing live video while we play, so he's actually performing with us. I know you'd hope to bring uh, some visual uh, installation to this stage as well, but we just couldn't, um, couldn't fit it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the velvet's nice, though. And I believe, are those icicles? <laughs> oh no, it's some sort of lighting. But those are good, you know, really had me going. 
Watching, watching you perform, you, you guys are very intense and, you know, intent on performing your instruments. Um, and so the, the, uh, the visuals are, uh, are so an important funny. part of it. The light show. Uh, um, I wonder if you feel more comfortable um, as a band in the studio or, or on the road and on stage. I think you're looking at us in our most comfortable element right now. Yeah. I can tell. I can tell. This is kind of. <laughs> you know, when I'm in the when I'm waking up in the morning and I'm thinking about you know my oatmeal and my toast and like you know chia seeds these days you know. Um, you know the thing I'm thinking about most is when am I gonna be able to get on stage, and just be in front of a lot of people you know. <laughs> Damn it, man, it's sarcastic jokes. It's still over. No, well, are you serious? Or? <laughs> I don't even know anymore. <laughs> Just say, say yes. Oh, no. no I can't. <laughs> um, yeah. what, uh, what do you guys do on your, your spare time? <laughs> spare time. I mean, we're both um, dom domesticated fully. Are there any hobbies in? <laughs> no, not really. Um, Breakdancing. eBay. I'm a pretty tai chi. eBay fanatic. eBay fanatic. Yeah. All right. I hear that you are an avid surfer. Yes. Oh, great. So <laughs> tell us, uh, when you're on the road, when you're on tour, do you bring a surfboard with you? Uh, no, I just have, I borrow them from friends. And you surf back home? Um, in yeah, I surf all the time in, surf in, all, yeah. in Rockaway. That's cool. Ben, do you have a hobby? <laughs> yeah, um, I do a lot of uh, computer programming, actually. So, I don't know. What kind of... Um, it's, not, it's not that cool. Really. What, what kind of applications? No, that's cool, man. What kind of applications, or what do um, you do? Like, I'm making musical instruments, effects, stuff like that. So Are those things you incorporate into all of... All of your work? Yeah, sort of. I mean, it's the kind of thing, it's like more of a long-term thing. So, uh, Like after the, this MGT, M2 thing is... Well, it's, nice to, it's nice to have things that I know will work when I'm playing live. So, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's a little ways off from that. Tell us a little bit about your rig, actually. It makes me curious when you say that. Um, I don't think we've ever had a band that, that's put the drum kit over to the side like that. Oh, that's yeah. Unique. That's so we can see. And then we, uh, we actually have cats in these boxes here, <laughs> completely full of cats. Is this your full, your full setup? Yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. I mean, I, I saw just, it was a total moment of, I saw the dust destroyer, and I was like, I want to spray the dust destroyer. Because it gets so cold when you spray it. It's really awesome. We don't usually have this on stage. <laughs> but it's like, it sounds like the beginning of um, electric feel, right? <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> I love that song, by the way. Are you going to do that tonight? Sure are. Awesome. Um, <laughs> second to last. Do you want to do, do this <laughs> at the beginning of the song? Too much pressure, yeah, but maybe. Oh, that was a good joke. Um, oh, yeah, it's, it's pressurized. <laughs> hey, so can you give us the lowdown on um, the rest of the summer? Are you doing a whole festival run here? Yeah, it was one. It's not too much touring this year. We're going to Europe in uh, the uh, third week of June and playing some interesting places that we've never been. Like Zagreb. Give it up. Zagreb. <laughs> um... Budapest, which formerly formerly Budapest, and then um, where else are we going? Moscow, wow. I never know when to say Moscow or Moscow. I feel like it's like kind of like smart, you know, literary people say Moscow. Oh, uh, like you know, like um, or same thing with with you know, Aleister Crowley. With that expression, you know. Actually. Is anyone here going to Coachella this weekend? Yeah. 
few of you, okay. Um, considering you've toured the world and gone to a lot of festivals, give us one um, highlight festival that people really should check out. I would say um, uh, either Glastonbury or Fuji Rock. Now, Fuji's you know, right, yeah. A, a lot of bands um, roll out some surprises on the Coachella stage. Do you have um, a hologram planned or anything? <laughs> no. This weekend? Who, d who would be our top hologram collaboration, do you think? They have to be dead. We could kill them, and then they'd be dead. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think somebody, like, that would be like, oh, I don't know. I think hologram Jimi Hendrix at a I'd music festival. Would be I'd say kill good. Bob Weir and then <laughs> have a hologram of Bob Weir. But, I mean, not like, not like really going to do this, so it's not like, I don't know if... I love, you know, the Grateful Dead. We're not going to really kill Bob Weir. But. We're just pretending right now. Right. So if we're going to pretend, then we're going to kill Weir <laughs> first. We can do that. Uh, well, I think this interview has gone completely sideways. <laughs> but I do want to thank you guys for performing for us, for KCRW. I do have a few thanks, if I could, before we head into the second set. I promised uh, we would thank, ah, well, Bob Clear Mountain, Betty Bennett, thank you guys. Also thanks to John Sullivan for lighting. The lighting has been stellar. And Subtractive right here for filming the session. Now, without further ado, let's get back to it. MGMT.